Hello and welcome back to the extended cut of how to make banana cake with goemon. Today we will be needing lots of flour, some sugar and obviously bananas. But more to that later. We'll also be needing different utensils. Hang on. Now the obvious problem with my baking is that I never ever use recipes. So if you want to reproduce that, you'll just have to follow whatever I'm taking. All right, let's go on to it. I'm using mixed flour of oats and wheat because that's cheapest at Planet Organic so I have no idea what you're using and frankly I don't care. I'm me and I'm measuring everything in spoons. This size of spoons. So I'm using six big heaps of flour, which translates to about 800 gram. Let's take a bit more. So that makes 900 gram of wonderful fresh flour. Mm -mm -mm. Now that will be a bit tasteless on its own. So we shall add baking powder. I used baking soda in the past. I used it once actually and uh, then was quite surprised that there was a taste of almost only salt in the mix. Don't use baking soda. Baking powder is much more wonderful. And use about as much as you need for what you believe to be about one kilogram of flour. Spices. Spices are important to give your baking creation additional taste beyond bananas. I love, personally, I love cinnamon, cinnamon and I put a lot of that in it. About two tablespoons. Same thing for anise. Mm -mm -mm. You can never have too much anise in your cake. Incidentally, you can also make this cake into a more traditional Christmas seasony cake mix by just adding more Christmassy spices. Duh! Cloves! Don't put in too much or it will just be bitter and ugly. I went and pick cocoa powder. I think you say cocoa in North America, which is stupid because it's read C O C O A. There's an A on the end, and you're meant to pronounce that. You silly folks. So let's take another heap of cocoa powder as well. And there you go. And that's your lot really. Well, you may want to add a bit of sugar because that's fashionable apparently. So let's add some sugar. About three heaps.
I personally prefer to mix sugar flour in the ratio of about 1 to 3, i.e. 250 grams of, of sugar on 750 grams of flour. How you do that personally, I don't, I frankly don't care, but you may not want to add too much sugar, otherwise it just tastes sweet. And you totally don't want that. And that's it really, now it's time to mix it. So, let's do some mixing. The number one reason why you mix all the dry ingredients beforehand is if you leave it until you have water in there. It just clogs up and uh, you have things like cinnamon just building big clumps somewhere and you totally don't want that because it tastes really ugly. So you mix all the dry stuff beforehand just in case you didn't know. And add the rest to that. Flomp. The next thing we need to do is Preheat. Let me just turn you around. And this is my cooking corner. So what I'm using for baking is indeed a slow cooker and uh, I'm afraid we need to preheat that. I know the instruction menu says never ever preheat a slow cooker, but in this case there's another way. So we put a bit of oil on the bottom and then we basically preheat it just enough to let the oil flow easily. Done. Back to the table. Now we obviously need to mash up some bananas but because that's kind of key ingredient in a banana cake. Uh, and please use ripe bananas. Don't use the green, ugly, unhealthy stuff that you get in the store. Let them ripe for God's sake. Incidentally, we also need a fork. And then the magic is happening. bananas. Ugh. The question is of course, do I need to have you watching this for uh, peeling and smashing five bananas? Will it not get too boring? Well, it is boring for me, so you might as well participate. That's the kind of evil faultless person I am. Oh chickadee, on your bed of seeds dart. There's another fun part to this, if you like. Mm. Wisdom, to be born with a wingspan so small. To take flight over nothing at all Oh chickadee And there you go I could have researched and inserted some banana joke but Meh, saw that While we are waiting for the slow cooker to finally heat up to its temperature that will make this cake reasonable. I might as well tell you that this is a completely vegan cake, so if you need animal parts in your cake, this is not for you. This is also the reason why it works in a slow cooker, because there is no eggs, milk or any other animal products in there, which means you can over or under cook it without having any health issues associated with that, which I think is pretty nifty. Also, I'm vegan, so it totally makes sense. So what we will be adding to the dry, 
dry stuff in the end is merely the bananas, which basically gives it the final cake stability, sort of replacing the eggs. A bit of oil, vegetable oil, of course. Silly. And lots and lots of water. Overall about 700 milliliters, plus minus, or I will do it back in a sec. One of the main reasons why we are preheating the slow cooker is to make the oil more viscous. So just twirl it around and if the oil flows nicely, it's done. And then we can mash up the stuff. So put the bananas in with all the dry ingredients. It should be a bit like this. Plop. Also, let's bring in the slow cooker. Bing! There you go, movie magic. Now pull the stuff into the slow cooker. Make sure that the bottom is greased with oil. You'll notice that the that the oil you will hopefully notice that the oil is liquid enough to or viscous enough to climb up to the sides of our crock pot. Otherwise there might be some slight issues afterwards for getting the cake up. But usually that's not a big problem because it's really just flour, water, and a bit of oil. So there shouldn't be issues. Should there be any in yours? In your kitchen, I mean. Not in your marriage. Can't quite help with that. Um, try not to contact me because besides being unavailable most of the time, I also don't give a flipping monkeys about your problems. Oh, there we go. Now you just let it standing around and uh, cook for three hours. Hmm. Sounds simple enough. However, if your slow cooker is a lot like mine and um, it kind of wobbles about, then uh, you might have to readjust that every, I don't know, 30 to 60 minutes or so. Just slide it to the side so that the 
ceramics don't actually touch the, the metal but are still getting enough heat to supply the cake with below power and uh, see you in three hours. And here we are back in the kitchen after only four hours which is also why the lighting completely changed because it is now light around. That means in terms of timing you have to pay some attention to what is happening in the crock pot. The cool thing is though that all the aroma is still in there which is one of the many many reasons why I prefer doing my baking in the slow cooker as compared to the incredibly energetically wasteful solution of stoves. But there we go, four hours later it is done. It is now um, crusty. That's, no, it's, it's not hard. It's just no longer liquid. Let's put it that way. And all that remains to do really is to lift the lid and uh, wait another hour. No, seriously. Wait another hour or you will have a bloody slimy mess at the bottom. See you in a bit. And now it is basically done. And all you need to do is get it out of the freaking pot and put it onto a plate and then eat it. If you did everything correctly, you will have a delicious banana cake dish. Ta-da! Alright, you can all sort off now. Be gone and let me eat cake.